before I started having experiences that really opened my eyes on how the healthcare system worked in the US, I was pretty blindsided and kind of just accepted things for how they were. Finally seeing how other countries take this into their own hands and create action, the more I begin to question, why should US citizens just have to accept the system for what it is? Hello human beings, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, my name is Cecily. Today we're going to be filming a new episode of American Avoiding America. This is a web series that I've recently started on my channel. I currently live abroad now in Europe for the past six years. That being said, I do kind of compare the two different experiences, the two very different experiences that I've had in each region of the world. There are three very important facts that I want to share with you guys before we start diving into my experiences that I've had personally with the different healthcare systems. Number one being that Americans pay more than anyone else in the world for healthcare. Just to put things into perspective, I want you guys to guess how much it costs just to have a baby. Like if you're giving birth, how much it costs to go to a US hospital. I'll give you two, three seconds to come up with a figure. Go ahead. Are you done? On average, it cost 11,700 American dollars to be able to give birth in a US hospital. Number two is that the US healthcare system is pretty much run like a business rather than something that all humans should have the right to. In the US, there is a constant conflict and power struggle between the private insurers and the private providers and drug company. Private insurers are constantly having to negotiate prices with the private providers. Therefore, the high prices have a lot to do with price control and the fact that the government doesn't necessarily have the final say when it comes to how much a prescription drug costs or a service such as an x-ray or an operation. Administrative costs usually plays a huge role as well. The fact that there are so many different billing systems and that the doctors get paid a lot more than in any other country. The third and final fact that I want to share with you guys before I start going into my personal experiences with the different healthcare systems is that nearly all European countries have universal healthcare. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's free, but let me just give you an example. In France, an $18 copay in order to stay overnight at the hospital is pretty normal. That cannot even get you close to buying a prescription drug in the US, unfortunately. Needless to say that an overnight stay at the hospital in the US will cost you close to thousands of dollars. Now that you got all those facts in your brain, I'm going to share some personal experiences that I've had with the healthcare system, not only in the US, but also here in Europe. The first thing that I want to talk to you guys about is prescribed medication and my experiences with it. Just like many other young women, I was on the pill before. In France, while I was living there, I was paying about five euros for three months worth of birth control. Let that sink in. That is less than one euro and 70 cents or two American dollars per month. This is the bomb. Another prescribed medication that about 50% of the population has to take at one point or another in their life is Plan B. Again, I paid about five euros for that in France, which absolutely blows my mind considering that in the US, you will pay $50 on average for Plan B. Likewise, in the US, you can pay close to $1,400 just for a CT scan, and in the EU, it is closer to $140. Okay, I'm going to give you guys a little break from some of the facts and figures. Going back to some of my personal experiences, I want to talk a little bit about how each region of the world deals with residents and non-residents. While I was living in France, I was under a student visa. And with the student visa, you have the right to something called a carte vitale. I do look like a criminal in my picture. I don't even know if you guys can see it. This little card gave me the right to be able to have access to universal healthcare in France. This allowed me to get my prescription drugs for the prices that I had mentioned earlier. Even if I didn't have citizenship status, I was only residing there as a student. I was still entitled to all of the rights that French people have in terms of healthcare, of course. In contrast, when I go back to the States to visit my family, I am completely thrown out of the bus. If I happen to have some kind of accident, if I happen to have some kind of injury while I am in the US visiting my family, 
I am not covered whatsoever because I do not hold insurance in the US. Even though I am a US citizen, they do not look out for their people like they do here in the European Union. There is a ridiculous story that gets me so mad every time I think about it. It was 2018 and I was visiting some of my family in New York. I was flying over and I started to realize that I was getting some kind of infection in my eye. A few days pass, I am still in the US and it gets worse, it gets really really bad. I start getting like this bump on my eye which had never happened to me before. These things are called size, if you have never had it before I'll put some kind of photo here but that was just getting progressively worse over the days and someone said you should probably go get that checked out and so I did. I went to a place called City MD, which has over like 75 locations in New York City, so it was the most convenient. In the US, these places are called urgent care centers, which means it's not an actual hospital, but you can go in, get something done quickly, and then be able to get the prescription in order to get your medication. Mind you, I had never been to a doctor's visit without some kind of insurance in the US, so I was not even like aware of how much it was going to be. So I go, I already know what I have. It was a stop. I was simply going because I could not get the medication without visiting an actual doctor and getting the prescription for it. I go in, I see the doctor. He tells me that I have a sty, which I already knew. That alone cost me, I think about $200. And then on top of that, I had to pay another $100 for the medication itself. While visiting the US, a little bump on my eye cost me close to $300. That was just a really, really big eye opener for me. I was quite young, just turning 18, I believe. I wrote something down when I was doing research for this video that really just wraps up how the whole system in the US works. And I'm gonna read it out for you guys. The more doctors prescribe, the more they get paid. The more prescription meds we take, the more dependent we become, and therefore the more we continue to buy. This overall increases the demand and private pharmaceutical companies end up staying happy, they continue to grow. As long as there is that high demand for pharmaceutical companies and pharmaceutical providers to continue creating their supply, they will continue to have the power. The only way that they can change this is if governments end up creating universal healthcare system just as the European countries have already done. And to be fair, the European countries have been around for a lot longer, so they have been able to play around with the different systems, what works, what doesn't. Maybe the US just needs more time to get there, but as long as the government doesn't have full final control over price regulations, things are not gonna change. Keep talking about it, keep spreading information, keep sharing all of this content. As long as we're educated, as long as we're knowledgeable on how things run in our countries, the more that we have information to spread and continue educating others as well. Lastly, I do wanna say that if you guys enjoyed this video and you took away some valuable information from it, please do not forget to share it with your friends who maybe don't know what other countries are dealing with when it comes to healthcare systems. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you guys in next week's video. Bye guys. Ooh, that felt good. Okay, I'm back. <laughs>